life, I've heard stories of my family all working for the J.R. Love Company. My great-grandfather's company he formed in Celeste after separating from his brother Rufus at Lepnit, which was located in Greenville. The company ran from 1948 to 1983, and everyone from my grandmother, grandfather, as well as his sister, my great-aunt Janelle, and his father, our papa, and even my own mother, spent time helping to run the shop. This project gave me the means to dig a little deeper, however, and gain stories from two other workers in the shop. One Miss Joella Pearson, whose voice you're about to hear, and her daughter Martha, whose story I'll dictate myself. By the end of this video, I hope you all will understand what a treasure this company was to my family, its employees, and Northeast Texas as a whole. He had been uh, associated with his brother, Love Me, at the Greenville, so they dissolved partnerships and he came up here. And the first thing they did was uh, uh, manufacture children's underwear. And it went from that to this groove you know, where they made other things, little dresses and, and sleepwear. Mm -hmm. I began working in uh, September of uh, 49. And I began working as a, I did the boxing after the things were trimmed. I pressed box. And I did that for a while, and then I started filling orders. And so in a few years, a few months, well, they grew. We did so much that I just took over the order department, really, and then they hired others to help me fill the orders. And I worked there about 24, 25 years in the factory sale. After graciously sharing with me a photo of her mother so that I could show her to you during this project. Martha Pearson Campbell graciously told me her own story of working for the company. This is what she had to say. Having J.R. Love Company and Celeste, of course, stimulated the city's economy, but it brought jobs for the local women especially that could not drive out of town for employment. Every member of the family did not have a car back in the day. My mother, Jo Willis, started working there when I was two years old. As I became older and didn't need a babysitter, she thought I became a latchkey kid, as they were much later called. With Celeste being so small, I roamed the streets a lot of the time and always knew I could drop in J.R. Love's office and see my mom anytime I wanted to. The office kind of became my second home. I do not remember my mother missing a day of work hardly at all, and she never took much vacation time. When I was 16 years old, I went to work for J.R. Love at my second home, the office, typing orders on an invoice for the vendor. There were two ways that the covers of the catalogs were done. Either they'd be hand-drawn by my grandmother, Betty Shepard, or my Uncle James, who owned Nairmore Photography in downtown Greenville, would do cover photo shoots. The models were often members of the family. Featured here are my mother, Shelley Shepard, and our cousin, James's daughter, Holly Nairmore. On February 2nd of this year, I met with my Uncle James and my grandmother to be told exactly what it was that happened at J.R. Love Company. That day, we gathered pictures, and I took audio recordings of what they had to say. The following is an excerpt. Walmart. Walmart, and they were, and the business started going out of the United States. They, we, well, we, it, this was later, though, James. Well, but even when Ray, when, when I'll tell you exactly, exactly when it ruined us. What? The last time they raised the minimum wage while we were still in business. Nineteen seventy-seven. Um, something. Like in closing, I must share with you two of the covers which were hand-drawn by my grandmother, Betty. 
the second of which was the last catalog ever issued. The store would close just six years later as a result of trying to compete with stores such as Gibson's and Walmart, who would sell materials and clothes at the same price that J.R. Love Company bought them for. This final thought comes from the heart of my mother, Shelley Shepard Longacre. The store building is still there, and this is the original sign. On one hand, it makes me happy to know it's still there. On the other, it makes me sad. To drive through Celeste, Texas, and see the building in the sign is a reminder of the end of an era for my family.